Hey everybody, Akira's here. Welcome back to Starcom Nexus. Alright, so here we go. We're back at our home base. We're ready to do some improvements. Alright, we got our commander yelling at us here. Let's see what she has to say. First officer transmitted your mission logs to us as soon as you were back in range, and I just finished reviewing them. Looks like you found a non-hostile race and opened a line of dialogue. Well done! Starcom Protocol has some strict guidelines on the amount of involvement we can have with non-allied races. But you're the one in the field. What do you think? Well, let's see. I think they're, these are extenuating circumstances. If we ever make back to Starcom space, you could say I did it on my own, or I'll try to play by the book. We're going to go with the first one there. I'm not leaving you out to dry. I'll trust your judgment and back you up. Okay, that was nice of her. Was there anything else? We use more crew. Yeah, we need more crew. So we got plus one crew there. Everyone's excited to join your crew. We're all counting on you. Is there anything else? I found debris from a Starcom vessel during a survey. I saw that in your report. Maybe it broke off from the survey lander. Let's see here. Um, I don't think so. Is it possible another Starcom vessel has been here? I'm unaware of any Starcom ship ever vanishing without a trace. If it's a Starcom and it's not your ship, the most likely possibility is that Captain Lee and the Byzantine got pulled in as well. And if you found a Bree but nothing else, well, it's not a good sign. If you find any other signs of a Starcom ship, let me know right away. Okay, will do. Is there anything else? How's morale? Not too bad. When people hear that your crew is hopeful, and that makes them hopeful. Oh, everyone's happy. That's all for now. Okay. Good deal there. All right. Let's see here. Let's do, maybe do a little bit of research. Well, we don't have that many research points, unfortunately. I think we can do the gravitational gliding. Let's go ahead and knock that out. There we go. Let's go to the shipyard. See if we can do anything here. We got three of those, and we're pretty much full up on our modules for now. So let's take a look at blueprints. We can do a light surveyor. That's what we have anyway. Wait for the light frigate. Yeah, so we already have that. I don't think we, we can't add anything else, I don't think. Plasma turret. Yeah, there's no open hexes, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and leave the station and go do some more exploring, shall we? Let's bring up the map here. See, I'm gonna definitely use the jump gate, and kind of wanted to head down here to see what this was about. Possible enemy base. So maybe we'll get killed, maybe we won't, but uh, we'll definitely find out. Let's go give it a shot. It's been uh, about a week, maybe maybe a week and a half since I played this, so. Man, when I get in here, I just remember how much I love this. It's so much fun. Alright, here we go. So, from here, I'm sure we're going to run into a fight. Let's go ahead and head down here. Oops. Hit the wrong key there. Oh, we got ourselves an enemy. Oh, that's it. That's just a traveler. Never mind. Sorry, buddy. I'm mistaking you for my arch nemesis. start replenishing our energy a little bit here before we jump. Did we already check all these? I think we did. If not, too late now. Going through the wormhole toilet there. Okay, what have we got here? A couple question marks. So let's go scan these planets, see what they have for us. Now, someone said that once you scan it, there might be more anomalies to scan. So don't just run off away from the planet, because apparently I uh, had that happen, and I missed it. So be a little more careful. No anomalies, okay. We got 
ourselves an enemy craft. I think we'll quickly dispatch him. Yeah. Boom. Boom goes the bad guy. Found another part of a missile launcher. By itself, not enough to start research, but maybe we can find additional components. Very good. Oh, enemy base. Alright, let's send down a... Send down a uh, dropship here, see what we can find. Scanners were unable to detect any indigenous life on this arid rocky world, but a high plateau is riddled with tunnels. They do not appear to be the result of National Geographic... Natural, National Geographic, <laughs> Natural Geographic activity. As the team approaches one of the tunnel openings, faint metal rattling can be heard. Mining equipment just inside the entrance appears to be that of uh, Chitik origin. Okay, return to the ship, set a team down in the tunnel. Now, hold on, I need to get a... I've been through this before, and I need to make notes on where my guys are at, otherwise they get lost in the tunnel. So let me bring up my little notepad here. So I can draw myself a map. All right. So let's see here. Send the team into the tunnel. As the team moves through the tunnels, they become aware of increased movement, sticking to the quieter, small tunnels. They're able to grab moderate amount of titanium undetected. Return to ship for now. Oh, normally it's like, hey, go north, go south, go east, go west. Sort of like, man, like back in the day, like text-based adventure games. Um, keep searching. Team finds a cache of titanium ore in it at the end of the tunnel. As they gather up the ore, a group of Chai Tech workers surprise them and sounds the alarm. The team rushes back to the surface towards the lander. As Chai Tech armed with mining lasers open fire. So we lost two crew, but we did get some more titanium as well. They are gone, but not. Whoa! What's with the music? We got more baddies? No. Okay, so survey complete. That's what we're looking for. I wonder what's with the music? I don't see any baddies on the screen. We're gonna go down here and check out this planet. Oh, here we go. Chitik Orbiter. I think that's gonna be another base. Yeah, it's right on top of the planet. So this is definitely a planet worth looking at. Oh my gosh, this thing's huge. Okay. Might be more than I can handle. Nope, we're, we got it. Okay, we need to bail out, cool down. We're okay. And we'll repair. Yeah, we're coming back for more. That orbiter is gonna be ours. Whoa. I mean for that to happen. How far would these missiles go? Pretty far. <laughs> They're kind of cool. I, I'm kind of looking forward to having missiles eventually. One of these days. Let's get out of here. Hundred fifty three units. What is this thing? It's it's not hostile yet, but he's coming right at me. Hail. The waters were warm and the paleo tres swam into our mouths when we Aluquo first met you. They were delicious. By what name are you known? Are you asking who we are? I'm Acurias of Starcom. We're pulled into this region by space of space by a rift in, the, in, it, in space. Are you threatening to eat me? We we don't take kindly the threats. Eh, let's just be cool for now. 
How strange the way you became you came into these undeep waters. We had not seen your kind, but you gave us gifts and we tried to help. If you can help us, maybe if you if you can help us, maybe we'll give you something in return. What kind of gifts do we give you? I think we'll be able to, What kind of gifts do we give you? We did not remember this part of our story. You filled in the gaps. It was a story not in the words that mattered then. Okay. We give you the gift of peace. <laughs> yeah, let's give him some titanium. We gave you a little drop of sun at the start of our story, so we got two gold out of it. For things we swam. Things for things, things for knowledge. What did we do when we swam together? Uh, do I want things or not? I want... I think at this point... Let's get knowledge. What stories do we tell you? Stories from the Undeep. 85 Platinum. Available Platinum 10. It's about all... All set on the story stakes. Also, he wanted us to pay him with Platinum in the story. Things for things. So he's just trading. That's all this is. Gotcha. That's all for now. Okay, let's get back into the fight. Is this guy going to get into it? I think he's going to get into it. Oh, he is. I wonder if I can draw fire and have them get hit and we can get into the fight. Let's see. Are they going to stop firing? I think they did. Yeah, that's too bad. I was hoping they'd hit his ship and he'd jump into the fray. Should be about it, though. Boom! That was a big boom boom. It's the last part of the missile launcher we were missing. We can now research missile weapons back at the lab. Nice. Right, let's scan this planet. No surface anomalies detected. Let's keep going. So the, uh, yeah, the blue ship is like a trader ship. All right. Nothing. Is there another one over here? Let's see that one's over there. Okay, we'll just. Uh oh, we got a couple baddies down here. Let's see how big they are. Got three of them? Oh, this guy's tiny. This will be quick. If I can hit him. That guy doesn't want to fight me. He's running. I think this one was trying to get away, but just couldn't quite make it. There we go. Ah, oh, we got ourselves a gate we can activate here, probably. I guess we need to find the, the key that gets it going here. It'll be on one of these planets, I'm, I'm sure. Desert planet. It'll probably be on this planet. Three enormous pillars of weathered rock stretch up into the clouds. Upon closer inspection, it appears that they were once a part of a tremendous artificial structure, possibly a building or ceremonial relic. While its overall shape has eroded beyond recognition, seismic scanners reveal an entrance a few meters below the sand to the of the largest pillar. A flight of enormous, more enormous stairs, each nearly a meter high, climbs for half a kilometer through the interior of the pillar before reaching a large vaulted chamber. At the far end is a large apparatus of stone and metal that looks like an orrery or of the star system. There is a control panel covered with glyphs. Using the ship's translator, it appears that it can be used to open one eye, one's eye. Okay, so yeah, this will be probably what opens our gate here. There is a deep rumble followed by a surge of EM radiation above the pillar. On board the ship, energy readings, uh, ener an energy reading is detected somewhere else in the system. 
So yeah, this should start spinning up, which it is. Perfect. And no more, nothing more to survey here. Let's zoom out here. Blue main sequence, we can go over there too if we wanted to, but I think what we'll do is we'll hit these and then we'll do a jump. So, cool. Let's go ahead and save our game. And head on up here. See what kind of trouble we can get into over here. This is a mighty little ship, I'm telling you. Not to be trifled with. Okay, we've got some baddies here. I do want your resources, though. Come back here. God, you're so hard to hit. You're so small. I didn't get anything for that, did I? I don't think I did. No anomalies. Let's turn and burn. Really can't can't wait till I start getting to upgrade this ship a little bit. Right now it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get so big and powerful. Really? Nothing? Oh, well. Well, <laughs> let's head on down here. Probably tangle with this guy here in a minute. It's a scout. It's, it's, it's this over here. It's another scout. You guys are just so small. Oh, you're still alive? Really? Did I get your stuff in it. You want some too? Did you just see what happened to the last scout that messed with me? some floating stuff out here. I need to upgrade that tractor beam. It's annoying to have to fly so close. Alright, let's find out what we got down here. Another piece to the huge puzzle of this weird complex solar system we're half buried in the snow. Team finds a lightly bruised probe. It's a fairly sophisticated device with a number of technical advances unknown to Starcom. Judging from the design, a team of engineer speculates that these devices were sent out into the gal into galaxy in large swarms with the expectation that most would not survive. So short of, sort of a shotgun blast approach to exploration, I guess. Fortunately, it seems that the snow cushioned the impact enough so that its databanks were mostly intact. They are mostly, mostly consist of celestial survey data, but the team manages to recover a monochrome of valuable information. Okay, so well, we got a little something-something out of it. It's worth it. Anything else out here we need to look at? I don't think so. Now the question is, do we want to just do we want to go ahead and just head on over here and see what's going on over here? I think yes. I think we do. Let's just do that. So we're all about the adventure and the exploration, right? Uh oh, let me not get sucked into that. <laughs> Things quite powerful. Quite powerful. Turns out black holes are powerful. Huh. Alright, so yeah, we just keep... I can actually drive this way, but might not make for great contact. It's very cool looking, though. I'm trying to keep my energy above half in case I run into a significant baddie. I can kind of pulse jet it over here without much problem. Kind of keeps the speed up a little bit above 30. Keeps my energy levels high. Music ready to change again. Got a couple new planets. I just have a feeling that going out, you know, taking the time to go out to these places is where I'm really going to discover some interesting things. Got three new planets. I think I'll head down to here first. Towards this purple one. Energy's getting a little too low. Ooh, 
this is what is this the ice planet or gas I think it's ice gas giant yeah the inner liquid metal core of this gas giant is spinning in the opposite direction from its atmosphere. This seems to be caused by magnetically aligned particles in the transition zone. 90 research points, baby. Yeah, it's kind of hard to land, land on a gas giant. But, there are other types of rewards, I guess. Oh wait, there's another one down here. It just appeared. What we got? It's another trader? Yeah, friendly. Sardin. It's nice to have some people that have some friendlies in the skies with you here, right? Let's get a little closer here. Ice? I think it's going to be ice. Alright, let's go down and see what it is. <clears throat> Alright, survey lander touches down in whiteout conditions. Yep, so snowy at least. Attempting to pilot the lander any closer to the detected anomaly would be suicide. Have the team brave the storm. It's not worth sending a team into those conditions to support the survey. Um, they say it's suicide, but we're not going to kill our guys doing it. Team spends hours trudging through the blinding blizzard, constantly be thwarted by crevices and sheer cliffs. Eventually, the anomaly signal could no longer be detected. Possibly, it was an artifact generated. By the powerful storm. Oh, okay. So let's see here. Still survey in progress. It's complete. Yep, okay. Well, I don't know. It sounded like they were basically... I mean, you couldn't be any more clear that that was going to be a bad decision, right? And it sounded like my team had a tough time just making it out alive. Yeah, let's go up here. Let me take a look here at the map. Up here and then down and... Okay. This looks like a, an Earth like planet here. What do we got here? Just a traveler, fellow explorer. Anomaly detected. Let's go. Primitive village of stone huts uh, sits in incongruently. Go. I'm not sure. In congruous, gruous, gruously. Okay. In the lee of an old starship, the inhabitants, several hundred enormous furry bip bipeds, reveal their story via the universal translator. Several decades ago, they decided to give up their spacefaring culture and return here, their planet of origin. Now they lead a simpler lifestyle. En route, they were forced to jettison a large piece of cargo to change trajectory, an object which they described as a large golden octahedron and has no practical function, although they did attach great sentimental value to it. Unfortunately, they have no idea where it is now. Well, geez, you probably should have marked that on your map. Okay, let's do another survey. There, were, there it was where you could do another one. The furry natives welcome the returning survey team to inquire if they've seen or lost Octahedra. Nope. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark this. Oh, it's already marked. Does it say what it, what we need for here? I don't think so. I think I spelled that completely wrong, but close enough. All right, now we're gonna head down here. Yeah, I haven't had, haven't had the need to spell octahedron in quite a while. What do we got here, friendly? Greetings, my Starcom ambassador. I apologize if my manners seem, seem distracted. I've been fielding reports of chi attacks all day. Still, our government lacks the courage to act. I think I mentioned that the base is near 
whatever those coordinates are. Again, not that you should involve yourself in this. I merely thought you might wish to know how to avoid it. Yeah, sure. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? I think we covered all this, didn't we? Trace in particular. Ulaku. Uh, they are a curious race and a bit difficult to converse with. They have been star starfaring. No cannon. Race uh, for longer than I think they even know. Supposedly they developed space travel before writing. Wow. I thought that seems dubious. I can tell you that they place a high value on mutual gift giving, or what we call trade. But if you've gotten on the wrong appendage, I'd suggest a gift. I believe they've been interested in platinum lately. We've had some running with the chi Uh They are most difficult race, like the insects they descend from. They seek to expand, swarm, and consume. They're like the Decepticons. Their ships are not as powerful as ours, but they make up for it in numbers. Yeah, we, we got that. And we believe they established a forward base at this uh, place. Okay. We'll see what we can do. No more questions. We'll be on our way. <laughs> Got some friends in this. Oh, this is definitely an Earth like planet. It seems small, though. At least in comparison to all the other planets we keep running into. We have an anomaly on this planet. Oh, it's San Francisco. No. Uh, it kind of looks like. What's that huge uh, radio dish there in um, South America? This terrestrial radio tel that's it, radio telescope, uh, is over 800 meters in diameter, larger than the Galileo uh, Valdarno on Europa. Unfortunately, whoever built it has since ceased to maintain it. Someone has abandoned uh, with a large number of its titanium aluminum reflector panels, rendering it effectively blind. Despite the removal, it still has hundreds of panels left. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Damn looters, might as well scrap the telescope and take the rest of the titanium. Use 200 ship make repairs. That might be interesting. We might be able to find out something. Can we do that? I think that would be worth it. Let's do it. The crew spends the better part of the day fabricating, installing, replacing panels. It's almost as good as new, and the telescope returns a, to passive scan for the heavens. I don't know what that means. Okay, let's try this. Further investigation possible. The telescope is still operating, and no one seems to have removed any of the titanium since it repairs hasn't gathered any data of consequence either. So we can come back here occasionally and maybe get some points. Let's the entire telescope. For, no, no. We're going to let it do its thing and scan the heavens. And we will definitely put a marker on the map here. Super telescope. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, let's, let's put it here. Super telescope. Return for possible data. Okay. Let's uh, get on out of here then. Let me see here real quick. I'm pretty sure we need to go yeah, straight this way. What the hell's shooting? I don't even see anything in my... It better not be destroying my telescope behind me. Somebody was popping off some rounds, though. Alright, need to return some energy. Getting real low there. Like, sitting duck low. It's not the one we'll go through. We'll go through the southern one. All right. Guys, I'm looking at the clock here. I'm thinking, go ahead and end this episode right here. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm still enjoying this little space adventure very much. Hope you guys are too. Y'all take care.